Hi, my name is Alan McGuire. I'm here to talk about auto-tuning Linux with eBPF. So the problem is the Linux kernel has a lot of tunables. Um, on a 6.4 kernel, we see about 1600 sys controls alone. And most of these reflect the, the reasonable fact that there's no easy right answer for a lot of aspects of configuration. Uh, within Oracle, we were seeing the same kind of tunable issues crop up repeatedly with the same tunables. And the general process was someone would file a bug, engineers with experience in those subsystems would post some suggestions for how to tweak those tunables and these problems would go away. But we wanted to explore if there was a more systematic way to, to address these sort of problems. Now, BPF is interesting because it provides a very low overhead way to observe a system. And once you can observe, you can ask questions like, well, does a tunable need to be updated? And then you can also ask, when I've made that update, has it been effective? Um, what effects do we observe after making that tunable update? Do we need to undo the change or has it done the job for us? BPF also provides a way to change values at a fine grain, like a per socket level. So it's useful in that regard also. Um, to talk about BPF tune, probably the best way is to walk through the design principles to give a sense of what we were trying to do and how we were trying to do it. Um, the first key principle is making BPF tune pluggable. We started off addressing issues with a lot of networking tunables, which were where we were seeing a lot of issues and bugs being filed. But the aim was to make it easy to add new tuners. Um, the approach we took is to make tuners deliverable as shared objects. Um, those shared objects would have to implement three methods, an initialization method to set up our BPF programs and do any other setup work that's needed, mm -hmm. a cleanup method to clean all that up when, when, when the tuner's finished, and an event handler method, which I'll describe in a minute. We also wanted to make the core BPF tune capabilities pluggable as well. So they're currently delivered in a BPF tune program um, or service. Now, because we've made those core capabilities, um, we've implemented them via library functions. The BPF tune program daemon is quite small. So the idea is by implementing those as a library, others can intermix those capabilities into their own products if they need to in the future. So we wanted to just make it maximally flexible in both regards. So when we look at the architecture, um, we'll describe the sort of flow of events. So we can see on the right-hand side, a set of BPF programs attached, which are interested in observing events related to TCP send buffer um, related issues. So we see one of the BPF programs has sent an event to the shared ring buffer, which BPF tune uses. And that event will have a tuner ID associated with it. In this case, the tuner ID of the TCP buffer tuner. And this allows us to then route the event to the TCP buffer tuner shared object and call its event handler method. And that event handler can then process that event. So in a case like this, it could be something like we're approaching the TCP buffer limit. You know, we've got to make a decision whether to increase it or not. So that, that's how information is kind of routed around um, within the framework. Another key principle is to minimize overhead. If this service is going to be running all, all the time, always on, we want to use F entry and F exit BPF probes because they're lower overhead than compared to K probes and K return probes. We also want to avoid high frequency events. So we don't want to trace a, a, a function that's going to be called a million times a second or anything like that. Another key aspect is we don't want it to be some sort of opaque procedure running. Um, the aim is to use syslog to describe changes what changes we've made and what the rationale for making those changes was. So it's understandable to the administrator what's being done. Uh, BPF tune will also provide a summary and exit describing all the changes made. So you can kind of see over the lifetime of BPF tune, what tuning decisions have been made and what the rationales for those are. It's also key not to step on the administrator's toes. I mean, one of the design principles for BPF tune is most systems these days are hands off and don't have an administrator on the console. But if there does happen to be some administration activity going on, we don't want to all do that by auto tuning on top of it. So we again use BPF to detect those kind of outside modifications to the tunables that a particular tuner is, is, is working with. And then if we detect any outside activity on those, we disable auto tuning in the relevant domain. So there's no kind of crosstalk between what BPF tune does and what an administrator is trying to achieve. We also don't want to replace tunables with more tunables. So we're trying to eliminate some of the complexity associated with all the kernel tree tunables. But of course, the danger is that we add a whole new set of tunables within BPF tune and give people all sorts of options um, there. So the aim is really to make BPF tune zero config and the tuning decisions we make should be sort of largely informed by observations we make about the system as opposed to choices that somebody makes on the command line when they run BPF tune. So the aim is to really have no options to go over the tuning process. 
it's also key to be namespace aware. Um, tunable values in one namespace might not make sense in another. So um, tuning should be done on a per namespace basis where you know the tunable in question is namespace, not all of them are. A key design principle as well is really when we're actually trying to find the right answer for a tunable, we want to take a sort of machine learning approach and make small changes incrementally and then evaluate the effects of those changes. Um, so this allows us to sort of examine the relationship between the constraints um, relevant to a particular achievable. We want to make small changes and observe the effects. So for example, for TCP buffer sizing, if we approach one of the buffer limits, we, we, we tend to increase. So that's a push upwards for the value. But we also want to monitor for any of the negative effects that might be associated with that, because in that case, we want to undo that change. So if we see latency in the form of increased round trip times in TCP, and specifically, if that's correlated with our increases in buffer size, um, we want to pull the value back down for, for the, the send receive buffer size. Similarly, we don't want to result in memory exhaustion. So if we keep increasing those limits, obviously, if each socket has a lot of memory associated, then we can, we can hit some of the you know, TCP low memory conditions like memory pressure, memory exhaustion. So we want to monitor for those and pull back down in the in consequence of hitting those. So it's sort of a balancing act between constraints which might push up a value like hitting a limit and other constraints that might mitigate um might make that not a good idea so things like running short of memory or inducing latency would be the kind of things that should pull values back down again so here in, in quite small text is um, an example of just starting vpf tune as a service we can then look in the syslog output to see what it did in this case i was just going around normal development activity cloning git repositories that sort of thing um, we can see what happened. Um, in one case, we hit a 1% uh, uh, loss rate for a connection and we applied the BBR congestion control algorithm. The rationale there is essentially that BBR is less pessimistic about um, the kind of um, congestion limits that should be applied in, in, in the face of loss. Um, and then secondly, we saw an, uh, an increase in the TCP received memory buffer size. Um, we hit some of the limits, so we approached some of the limits there and we, we bumped up that value as well. So finally, I just wanted to talk about the work in progress in BPF Tune. So BPF Tune is new and it's under open development. We we put it out in GitHub as soon as it was even vaguely ready because we really wanted to make sure that we could incorporate user feedback and you know get other people's perspectives. As I say, we focused on some of the initial problems we ran into in Oracle, but we're very interested to see what other tuning issues people have um, and, and we're hoping to apply some suggestions from from other folks as well um and it, you know it's very much under open development so if you have any suggestions please do file issues or there's a feature plan which we keep updated regularly to describe the work we've done the work we're planning um feel free to to, to post um changes to that if that's if that's the way you want to communicate those also um one of the recent changes we've made is to support multiple strategies for a tuner so some of the tuning methods now are quite basic, but the aim is to sort of evolve them over time. And if we have multiple strategies for a specific domain, the idea is if we have metrics that can evaluate the success of those various strategies, we can switch between them as appropriate. So essentially, if one strategy is not working, we switch to another one. So the basic strategy support is in VPF tune now. We haven't made much use of it yet, but there's work ongoing to do that. Um, specifically, we're looking at using reinforcement learning for optimizing TCP service settings. Reinforcement learning is a very promising area to apply to BPF because in terms of requirements, BPF has a lot of the things that reinforcement learning needs. Reinforcement learning doesn't require huge amounts of memory. It's not complex. It's essentially about choosing the right actions based on reward signals. Um, there's ways to formalize things like TCP connection lifetime in that kind of context. And, and we're, we're sort of doing some work around that at the moment to see if that's an effective way to do things like choose the optimal congestion control algorithm and make other TCP per connection settings uh, based on what reward signals that we define. So as I mentioned before, the initial focus of BBF Tune was on networking related tunables, but we're, we're keen to expand the scope to other subsystems as well. And by making BBF Tune pluggable, that, that's a reasonably straightforward thing to do. From an upstream kernel perspective, having more trace points um, makes life easier for BPF tune because we end up having stable places to attach and, and, and gather information. One particular area this might be useful in the future would be the neighbor and root table garbage collection um, to have trace points around completion there so we can assess how effective they were and maybe tweak some tunables if necessary. 
from a more general perspective, having a way to attach to the same decision points that are sort of tied to tunables today would be useful in the future. So rather than the sys control value being what determines the behavior, we have a BPF program attached to that decision point in lieu of having use it just using a simple tunable value. So we can make life more programmatic in the, in the way that BPF does. So this could be easily done with an FMOD return BPF program where we just have a dummy function, which um, we can modify the return value of in BPF context. And that modified return value could take the place of the tunable value so we can make things more dynamic rather than have just the tunables, set of static tunables govern things. I mean, currently BPF tune has to sit in user space and modify a lot of tunable values. Whereas if we had an in kernel method to do that, that might be a more natural way to express some of, some of these auto tuning decisions. Um, one thing that would be key, I think, in that context, though, would be to communicate to administrators that the tunable is under, map, under programmatic control via BPF. Um, because obviously, if people are setting tunable values, they expect them to be in effect. And if we're overriding that, we want to make that clear somehow. So th that's pretty much all I had to say. So thanks for your time. Um, I encourage you to take a look at um, the BPF tune repository, um, file issues, kick the tires, let, let us know if, um, how you find it, if there's other future work that you think we should address. Um, you know, we're, we're very keen to, to, to move forward with it. It's early days. So suggestions now will be, will be really helpful moving forward. So thanks again for your time.